I'm Bill Rogers with the Rogers Shooting School. We're going to take you through a few steps of how to learn how to shoot a shot of what we call human response time. And also we're going to show you a couple of products that will help you learn that. So let's talk briefly about what human response time is. Human response time is made up of two things, reaction time and movement time. We know that uh, once we train the mind to react to a certain stimulus, and it does take a little training, that it takes a, right around 12 hundredths of a second for the brain to recognize the stimulus. And then it takes about 1200, 1200 thousandths of a second to actually take and move some part of your body to uh, rectify that, that problem that you're talking about. So it could be the typing and you're typing the letter A, it could be hitting the accelerator when the light turns green. There's a lot of stimulants. It could be the turning target or it could be the sound of a beep that goes off. And we find that if the movement is very simple and just a simple action, like striking or hitting the typer, uh, tele, uh, the, the typing key, that that is about the, the simplest that we can get in movement. And that time is right around an average of around 24 hundredths of a second. When we take and start adding a little more movement, what we call steering, then we wind up by, we have to have a start, okay, and then we have to have a transition time when we're actually trying to steer the weapon or steer the car or whatever we're trying to move, steer the baseball bat to hit the ball. And then we have a pause where we actually get to the final action, the final stop. And about the fastest that we can accomplish that is what we call two response times, or right around a half a second. So. I'm going to do a drill here where we're going to just look at the timer and I'm going to have a random time go off and when it beeps I'm just going to take and strike the box and we'll look at what the primary time is. So here goes, we're going to start it, stand by, okay, I want you to get a picture of that, it's 0.23 of a second. So we talked about the average is about 0.24 of a second. Obviously, there's some people that have a little quicker uh, reaction to, to that drill, and they may be able to get down to 20 hundreds and so forth, but that's about the average. So if we sat here and do this for a long period of time, we'd come out with around 24 hundredths of a second as an average. For easy math, we just call it a quarter of a second. So what we're going to take is go through some drills of how to learn how to shoot a relatively accurate shot in a very short period of time. We're set up now at 10 yards from the target. And so I would recommend that you start off at like seven yards, but the way our range is set up is we're gonna work at that distance. So the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna take and set up your timer mechanism so that we're right at a half a second. So let me do that. So here's what it will sound like. All right, so that's a half a second. And what we're going to do is we're going to learn first that we need to take and learn how to manipulate the weapon. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to dry fire. So I, I'm going to show you a product that we make that helps us do that. It's called a, a TRT. And we simply take and load it in the magazine. It looks just like this. And what that does is it holds, keeps the follower, I mean, it replaces the follower and it keeps the slide stop from locking the weapon back. So I can cycle the weapon and I can drive fire safely. And so it also uses that same product if you want to learn how to, to uh, make a reload properly. So let me demonstrate that while we're talking about it. So I can just take and put it in my pouch that has that part. And we're gonna start with an empty magazine. Okay, and we'll lock the slide back. So to learn properly how to draw, we can start in this position and we can make the reload and come back out and make the shot. Okay, so again, if I take this out and put it in my pocket, work the action back with the empty magazine. We can lock it back. And again, we're gonna practice on making a good reload. So we come back, drop the magazine, magazine here, drop it and dry fire the shot. So also, we can use the TRT to practice what we call uh, tap rack. So if I just take and bump the magazine so that it hasn't come out of the weapon, then we see this happening, it's an immediate action. If I pull the trigger and goes click, I can tap the bottom of this, I can rack the action, come back out and work the shot. So it gives us a chance to do a lot of dry firing. So the first thing we're gonna do 
is once we set a target up for a, a half a second, we're going to take and extend the weapon to what we call confirmed alignment. And that's about like at a 45 degree angle. And I'm just going to pick a spot out there and I'm going to aim at it. And so now my wrist and so forth and hand is lined up with the weapon and the, and the weapons aligned. Now I'm going to look forward. And uh, if you will come around here and get a picture of the target, I'm, I'm going to look forward at the spot. And so once I recognize the spot, the fingers outside of the trigger guard, I'm going to lift the weapon, work the trigger and complete the shot on the spot. Now, if you take and look at response times, if you know that almost every action that we're going to do, we're going to have to add a quarter of a second to the drill, just like I tap the box, that's a quarter of a second to do a simple action. But just to take and lift the weapon, to start to lift the weapon is right around a quarter of a second. The transitioning to try to steer to the spot, that's the transition time, but there has to be a little bit of a pause before we break the shot. And so when we look at that, if we add th that time, and if we look at the normal way the academy shoot, here's what happens. I got a quarter of a second just to start to lift the weapon. I got a quarter of a second to stabilize the weapon. I got a quarter of a second to refine the sight picture. Then I've got a quarter of a second to put my finger in the trigger, and then I got a quarter of a second to actually fire the shot. When you total those all up, you're looking at around a second and a quarter. And that's what we see almost all the training that's done in academies, is they're giving the shooter about a second and a quarter to make the shot. We have got to be able to make that same shot in a half a second. And the only way we can do that is by multitasking. We have got to take and do several things at the same time. So as I'm lifting the weapon, I'm also putting my finger into the trigger and I start to work the trigger. I don't just pull the trigger and fire. And I tell you right now, you can't do this with three pound trigger poles. You have to use what is the standard trigger that comes with your weapon. So as I'm lifting the weapon, the finger's gonna go in the trigger. I'm gonna start to work the trigger. And as I pause just slightly on the target, the shot's got to break, but the front sight's got to be on that spot to make the shot. If I do that correctly, we can do it all within what we call two response times, or right around a half a second. <clears throat> so, but we have to learn how to do that. We have to learn how to multitask this so that it all happens in a smooth operation. The way to do that is start off by dry firing. So now I'm, I'm gonna set this now on a half a second. I'm gonna extend the weapon out and I'm gonna take and try to work the trigger as I lift the weapon. Here goes. Stand by. Lift the weapon, work the trigger. You're trying to complete that all in the time that the beeper is allowing us. So again, stand by. Okay, and one more time. Stand by. All right, now, after you dry fire this, and I'm not talking about two or three times, I'm talking about hundreds of times. If you do it over a period of a month, I would say like uh, every other day, practice for like a half an hour, 45 minutes. And so what the result is, is that you can point this weapon like you can point your finger, but you still have to see the front sight and it still has to be in that back notch to make the shot. Don't rely on laser beams, hit be uh, laser or hit beam or any of those th situations because people tend to look then at where they're hitting instead of looking at the front and rear sight. So what we have to do is we've got to practice. So we lift it, we're working the trigger and we see the front sight just as the shot breaks. Now, the comparison I can talk about is a baseball batter. So when does the baseball batter start to swing? You know, it, it, he, does he start when the ball is here or halfway down? The answer is no. He starts the swing based on the delivery of the pitch. And from that point on, his focal attention is on the ball. Okay, and the ball's going 85, 90 miles an hour. And at the time, he's focused on the ball as he starts to swing. Now, once he has started the swing, he's limited. He, he's already introduced that first response and reaction time. And so now he steers the bat. He can speed up the swing, slow down the swing. But what he's trying to do is make sure that the bat is there when the ball is there. The same thing we're doing right now. We're trying to make sure that the trigger completion is there when the front sight is there. And just like the baseball batter, we multitask. And we start off by lifting the weapon, working the trigger, steering the weapon, and completing the shot. One thing I can tell you is that before you start, don't tension your body. Now you can tension your grip, get a good tight grip, but you have to be loose. 
And the reason is that if you take and put any strength or muscle tension in here, it takes one response time just to eliminate that tension before you can start moving. So once you dry fire this a number of times and you get comfortable with being able to do it in time, stand by. Then it's time to go to the range and live fire. And again, stand by. Okay, so I look at the time. It's 0.43, but it's a little bit ragged shot. Let's see if we can take it do a little better job here. Stand by. <coughs> well, that's a better shot. If you look at the time, 0.47. So what we're gonna do is demonstrate that we can make that shot relatively accurate. You know, we're just trying to get close to that spot, but we know that we can do that drill now right around a half a second. So what we're gonna do now is the way that I learned to do that is I lift the weapon, work the trigger, the shot breaks, I freeze everything for 1001. We call it follow through. And what that allows me to do is my subconscious mind sees the hit compared to the sight picture. And in time, it takes and coordinates my body. Now, all eye hand coordinated skills are based on the subconscious mind learning this. And the only way the subconscious mind can learn this is by doing it. And the only way to do it right is by what we call correct repetition. So once we get to that situation, then we can take and learn how to what we call flip and press. So once we learn that we can follow through on that one shot without moving anything, we know that we can fire the second shot. Um, let me paint the targets up real quick so we got a clean target. So now what we're going to do is we're going to lift it and we're going to break the shot in hopefully around half a second. And then we're going to fire the second shot. Now remember, once I bring the weapon up, I've got a transition time, a start time, a transition time, a final time, right around half a second. But for me to flip and fire the next shot, I don't have to move the weapon. So I should be able to do that in what we call one response time. So it should be right around a quarter of a second. So let's see how we can do that. Stand by. Okay, so there's two shots. Let's review the total time. It's 0.73. Whoops. Let me review that now. Go back to review. So the first shot was 0.49 of a second. We're right on a half a second. So then our second shot would be, hit the review, 7.3 for a split time of 24 hundredths of a second. So there we know that we can take and fire two accurate shots. Take a look at the target there. We've got two accurate shots, and we've done those in what we call human response time. First shot is right around a half a second, second shot is around a quarter of a second. Okay, we just finished uh, doing a drill where we put two shots on the body and we're gonna work into the time that we're gonna take and put two shots in the body, a half a second for the first shot, quarter of a second for the next shot, and then how much time do we have to add to travel up and shoot the head? Well, remember the weapon is paused at that point, so we've got to start moving the weapon that's a reaction time a response time we have transition and then we have a final time to shoot the head target now what's important about it is that when we're doing this we got to keep the front sight clear now the difficulty in teaching what we call reactive shooting is that the subconscious mind is timing the shot and it times it within a couple of milliseconds and the issue is is that we're all subjected to overpressure or concussion and that's what we call causes what we call the flinch and the flinch is a simultaneous reaction where we take and close our eyes and push the weapon away from us when we fire the shot. So learning how to shoot that head shot is sometimes very difficult for our beginning shooters. Now the tool we use then is another product that we manufacture and it's a quality designed dummy bullet. And what I'm gonna do now is I've loaded my magazine so that I'll have two live shots. That'll be a shot on the spot followed by a second shot on the spot followed by the shot on the head. And what's important about this is that we learn the two shots, boom, boom, are locked up tight, that we're gonna track the weapon and we're gonna work the trigger carefully, seeing the front sight and the weapon can't move. So what we're looking for is there's no flinch involved. We don't close our eyes and we don't drive the weapon. 
and it's a learning tool that you have to use to get good at it. So let me demonstrate that. We're going to take a load now with uh, two shots followed by a dummy round. And we'll take and put the shot timer on. And we should be able to get the first two shots. So watch the weapon. That's what's careful. We're going to put two shots in the body and we'll basically dry fire with the dummy round on the head target. Stand by. Get the dummy bullet out and load up. We'll try it again. We're going to try to minimize any movement. Okay, well, let's, let's see. We'll, we'll try to minimize any movement. One more time. Stand by. Okay. And one more time. And if you look at our time there, that's 0 0.71. We'll review it real quick. So the review of the first shot is 0 0.45. Right around the half a second. Second one for the split time is 26 hundredths of a second. So we're getting our shots right about the right time. And we're simply trying to work on no movement on the head target. So let's try it again. Stand by. So much better. If you notice that last shot, there was no movement in the gun when I went to the head. And that's what we're trying to get. We're trying to get no movement. Okay. And here we go. One more time. Stand by. Ah, that's the best one altogether. And that's what we're trying to achieve is that little or no movement on the headshot. Okay, so we'll remove that magazine that's got the dummy rounds in it. No, get rid of that. And I'm gonna go forward and paint them up for a second. We'll get ready for the last drill. All right, so once we have learned how to control that shot with the dummy round so that there's no muzzle flip, and if you watch the first time, there was a little bit of a movement, and the second time, a little bit of movement. By the third and fourth time, I'm controlling the shot, controlling the trigger. That's what's really important about the type of shooting we do. Now we're going to put it all together. We're going to put two shots in the spot, close to the spot, and knock over the head, and we'll see if we can generate the kind of times that we need. Stand by. <laughs> right. So, we'll try not to trip it so we can look at the time. All right, so let's take it through the time. So, the review of the first shot is 47 hundredths of a second. Hit the button for the second shot with a split time of 0.24 of a second, right at a time. And now we're going to travel to the head. It should be right around a half a second. So we hit the review and the split time is 0.54. So I took 400 of a second longer, but within the time is 1.25. So that's the drill that you should be capable of doing to put two fairly accurate shots on the body and hit the head of the target within that time frame of 1.25 seconds. All right, so what we've taken you to is what we call shooting in response time, human response time. And you can see how we got there. You can see how we can use the tools of our little TRT practice for dry fire and the dummy round to kind of refine our shooting. Because when we're shooting at reactive speeds, the subconscious mind knows exactly when it's going to go off. And because of that concussion, we sometimes have what we call pre-ignition push. We anticipate the concussion and we move the weapon. The only way to learn that is by using the dummy rounds and trying to get correct repetition. So anytime you've got this dramatic movement, we've got to iron that out. We've got to make sure that when we're working the trigger, it's all smooth on that last run that's a dead center hit right on the headshot. If you're interested in, uh, in our products, go to rogershootingschool.com, go to products, and you'll find that we have several products uh, there for sale, including the TRTs, including the dummy rounds.